I want to talk about one more set of terms uh, in this glossary video for DevOps that are going to be crucial for our discussion later on on continuous testing, and that is uh, environments. Now, many test teams have suffered and have horrible stories about how they get environments, uh, the data that they test with, and that the, the that they have all kinds of environment problems. I don't need to go into what that is because if you've tested for long enough, you know that there there can be very easily and quickly be environment problems that cause us uh, problems in our test execution. These are no longer okay. We need to fix these problems. There are so many tools and so much technical advancement that uh, can take care of these problems for us. And uh, this is one of the major hurdles that uh, operations needs to sort out in DevOps. One of the reasons why we want collaboration uh, with uh, operations and we want, we want operations to shift their tasks left um, early into the development cycle is to fix some of our environment and data problems. I won't even say some, I'd say all, to fix all of our environment and data problems. So let's talk about some of these words that we need for this discussion. First is this idea of virtualization. And many of us know virtualization already. VMs have been around and have been used in a lot of companies about uh, uh, to help testing uh, get executed. So what is virtualization? Virtualization is to simulate an environment, to simulate a piece of hardware or simulate um, a database. It's, it's not a physical, real environment. It's a simulated database. Uh, it's a simulated server. It's a simulated mobile device. It's a, a simulated API or service. Um, what we need for our whole product environment uh, can be simulated and uh, virtualized and, uh, and it makes it more maintainable rather than having uh, those devices or depending on someone to go update a database server and go update a web server and go update an application server for us to run our tests. All of this can be virtualized uh, for a number of years, we've been using VMs, virtual machines, uh, to help us execute our tests. So we know virtual machines. Past that, uh, people can use the cloud. And this is becoming much more common these days. Uh, many companies already do this, where you have your uh, virtual environments up in the cloud. You don't have your own real owned database or your own real uh, web servers. Your web servers are uh, virtualized. Uh, at a remote uh, place on the as a service on uh, up in the clouds in in uh, uh, through a network whether it's through the internet or using some kind of um, uh, internet service to uh, to use to have your to host your remote uh, services but you can be you can have your environments up in the cloud and that leads us to uh, using these cloud services. Uh, such as people are calling it uh, environment as a service, infrastructure as a service, where there is this whole remote environment cloud that you can use that has your full environment always there, virtualized, that you can have a web server, database server, um, all the all APIs, all other, other things that you need, um, security policies, you can have everything built and you can have the whole environment up in the clouds, they are ready for you to use. And when these become virtualized, uh, one note about this is not only would you have like a dev environment and a test environment, you could have access to four or five or six environments. You could have a dev environment, a test environment, a staging environment, a production environment. Your production environment might even already be up in the cloud and you can just access it there. And maybe you have two or three clients that have uh, different uh, configurations of your system, you can have those three clients virtualized uh, through VMs or, or up in the clouds where you have access to test on them at any time. So the, so the hurdle of uh, IT or operations getting you environments um, is removed through the use of these technologies. I want to bring up this idea of containers. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about containers a lot. Uh, if you're going to be using containers, I suggest you go and do some of your some different research on containers. Look at some of the tools. Look at how your organization is going to implement containers. But just as a brief overview about containers, uh, 
a lot of people are talking about containers now. Containers are ways that you can encapsulate uh, all the various pieces of your system and put all these containers together into some kind of environment, uh, locally, remote, in the cloud, wherever you want to put them, and you can have this entire virtual system uh, using a lot less space than you did using virtual machines. Uh, and as well, one of the key parts of containers is you can swap pieces out. Um, if you have different clients with different uh, configurations, you can have all these containers and swap different pieces in and out and uh, get these test environments, get these development environments really fast that are full and complete. Um, and uh, uh, th this container technology is only going to advance and I think that they're going to be used more and more. So uh, we have all these virtualized uh, systems at our uh, disposal. And uh, what these are, the way that people talk about these days, is another important phrase that we need to know. And that is infrastructure as code. Whether you're using VMs, the VMs, the, 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 the image, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, a chunk of code. So whether you're doing this uh, in a VM, uh, in the cloud, uh, using any of these tools these days, uh, the actual system that you're using is not a physical database located in one place and maybe a, a web server and an application server and a couple of mobile devices. The entire system is code. And this infrastructure is code um, idea is, is significantly impacting just how fast we can move things out to deployment. So uh, with this whole topic of uh, DevOps and continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, um, the idea that we are not going to have the right environment or the right data to test with is gone. Those problems disappear. At any instant, whatever technology I'm using, I can have my test environment and I can run some tests in my test environment. I can run some things on the staging environment and I can run things on three or four uh, of my clients' environments um, in an instant because all of those environments are full, up-to-date, complete, using great data, clean, easy to spin up, easy to clean up, um, and, and all of my environment and data problems are gone. This idea about infrastructure as code is much more about the operations side and their shift left shifting their tasks earlier to the development cycle than it is about the dev and testing side. So as important as it is to dev and test to have great environments and, and great data to use in their testing and in development, um, this is more of an, about operations. So um, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you continue in this series, and our next video is on uh, uh, deeper, more information on the continuous testing process. Thank you.